Hello, good evening, Daniel. Can you listen to me? I know that we have some difficulties because of the rain. Yes, uh, I can hear. Okay, thank you. We're going to wait a little bit because okay. the, the classmates are are not connecting now. Okay, okay. we're going to wait a little bit. Esperamos un momento. Puedo pasar. Hello, my friends. Welcome to another English class. I know that some of you are like moving maybe and some others are finally at home. So uh, we're waiting for the others because I know it's like a very complicated uh, night because of the rain. Poco complicado por la noche. Vamos a ver si pues eh, se pueden conectar el resto de compañeros y compañeras. Esperemos un momento más. So uh, let's listen to some of you. Let's see who do we have here. Vamos a ver a quién tenemos por acá. 
class number 11, class number 11, how to use the past of be in simple past affirmative. Definitely we have Jose, right Jose, good evening. Hello teacher, good evening. Good evening. What's going on? Okay, I'm sorry, what did you say? What's going on there? How well, a kind of complicated night because of the rain. I was like, I came in a rush, like a couple of minutes. I don't know in your case, no problem with the traffic or, or the rain? No. In this case, not, not because I was working some close of my house, so. Okay, you're lucky you, nice. Yeah, because if, there are some others who travel like long list, uh, long distances and kind of difficult. Of course, of course, and many times I am far, of, far away from. Okay, depends from on. Yeah, depends on the visits, visits or or the work you are doing, right? Because you are moving. Yeah. Okay. It's depends on it. Yeah. Yes, advantages and disadvantages sometimes, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're okay. Right. Thank you, Jose. Nice to, to hear from you. Here we have also Gustavo. Good evening, Gustavo. Good evening, teacher. Uh, how are you tonight? Fine. Fine. Okay. Uh, well, no problem with the rain? No problem. Okay. Thank you. I like to hear that. Thank you very much. Here we have also Oscar, right, o Oscar? Good evening, teacher. Good evening. How are you doing tonight? I'm fine, thank you. Okay. Difficulties with the rain? Problems mm -hmm. with, because of the weather? No, no. Not really? No. Okay, nice. I like to hear that. Thank you. Okay, welcome back. Here we have also Marita, eh, Noé, Guillermo, Rosalí, eh, John, Alejandra. David, so welcome back to this class number 11. Remember, after this class, we have just nine classes. Solo tenemos nueve clases, and then we're going to finish. That's really nice. Okay? So, how to use past to be in simple past affirmative. Okay? So, before we go to this uh, topic, this is very, but believe me, very important, talking about the past. Simple past to be and simple past of verbs. Es super importante hablar del pasado. I know that you already have a lot of grammar structures, estructura gramatical, ya las conocen. Maybe in simple present the third person is kind of complicated. En la tercera persona, recuerden, kind of complicated, but here maybe we have to pay attention to the explanation. So we're not going to have more problems. We're going to start with this activity. Who's de quién whose birthday do you always remember okay so in this case you can answer for example my mom's it's on november 23rd or you can say some other examples uh, my you can say my uh, cousins estamos utilizando el posesivo estamos diciendo el cumpleaños de mi primo it's on April 2nd, okay? I need you to text on the chat, okay? You can write my cousins, my girlfriend, okay? Uh, my uncle, my aunt, okay? Yes, I know, Jose. We're going to study third person, maybe, and we're going to start the simple past. Después de esta clase, yo sé que van a entender bastante bien el pasado. Okay? So, here we have an example. Uh, you can say, my brothers, my grandma, my father, my fathers. Vamos a poner la apóstrofe y la S porque estamos hablando de un posesivo, ¿verdad? ¿De quién es el cumpleaños que siempre recuerdas? Ah, el de mi mamá, el de mi primo, el de mi papá. Y eh, ponen el, el detalle, please, en el chat, ok? I'm going to wait for the answers.
Okay, let's listen to some of your answers. I know you have your favorite relative or family member. So we're going to start this time with Rosalie. Okay, Rosalie, please. And then we go with Alejandra. Tell me about the birthdays. Mm -hmm. Okay, Rosalie, maybe you have some difficulty. It's on June 22. Oh, okay, thank you. On June 22nd. Mm -hmm. June 22nd. <laughs> thank you. Very nice, your sound. How are you going to forget that, right? Because it's so important to you. Thank you, Rosalie. Alejandra and Noé. Good evening. Hi there. My nephews eat on March. Uh, 19. 19. Okay, yeah, nephews are uh, maybe your favorite or the only one. Okay, <laughs> nice, Alejandra. Noé and Oscar, please. Good evening, teacher. Hello, Good Noé. Evening, teacher. Hi. I'm here. Perfect. I'm okay. Yeah. So, Hi, nice. my, my daughter, my daughter, it's on December 27. Uh, 17, right? Or 27? Because... 27. Okay, 27. Thank yeah, you. Okay. There is some... uh, Sorry. <laughs> no problem. No, how many daughters do you have? One or two? Only one. Oh, okay, so that, that's your baby girl, right? How are you yeah. going to forget that? Impossible. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. No. Yeah, I know. I have a daughter too, so it's like well, our baby girls, right? Thank you, Noah. Nice. Uh, Oscar and Jenny. Okay, Oscar. Uh, my wife eats on January 16. Okay, 16. Nice. A good husband. Nice. Can you see? Bye, bye, que vean la, las chicas. Aquí hay buenos esposos. Thank you, Oscar. Uh, Daniel and then Guillermo, please. Sorry, teacher, but I wow. am, I only know remember <laughs> my birthday and my daughter. Okay. Can you can you mention your daughters? Um Birthday 19, or night October night nineteen October. Ah, it's on October nineteen. Okay, thank you. Perfect. Okay, Guillermo, and then we go with David. Okay, teacher. Uh, just one thing. I turn off the camera because of the rain. My internet and it's not working. It's not uh, working. So well, say yes. I know. So when you turn off the camera, the the well Zoom works better, right? I know. Okay. Uh, thank you, Guillermo. So your mom's right? Yes, my mom's birthday. It's on October twenty eighth. Perfect. October twenty eighth. Nice. Uh, here we go with David and then Maritza. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my daughter Rita birthday. It's on December 12th. Okay, December 12th. Yeah, very interesting. Yes. December. Uh, Maritza, and here we have Noé again. Okay, Maritza. Okay, my mother is on September 17th. Really? September 17th. The same date yeah. from my, my, my daughter. Okay, curious. Okay, thank you, Maritza. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice day. Noé, no. and then we go with John. So my wife, it's on August 16th. Okay, August 16th. And yeah. yeah, nice because August and your daughter is on December, so separated. Yeah. Okay, nice. Okay. okay, thank you. John and Guillermo. Okay, good evening, everyone. Good evening, teacher. Hello there. Um, let me see, let me think. Okay. Remembering the birthday of my little family and October 20th is my son's birthday. Okay. And my wife and December 25. December 20. Okay. Uh, interesting. You have like uh, separated uh, birthdays. Good. Yeah. So you can, you can save money <laughs> to buy some presents. Good. Guillermo and Graciela. Okay, teacher. Uh, 
the birthday that I always remember is my mom's birthday, my brother's birthday, and my girlfriend's birthday. Very nice, Guillermo. You have good memory. Come on. Uh, just for a few dates. Uh, depends if you ask on the information. Me, <laughs> if you ask me for the other date of the birthday of my family, I don't remember. <laughs> you don't know. Okay. Yeah, usually happens. Okay. Yeah, it's because they are very important to you. Thank you, Graciela. And then we go with Jose. Good evening, teacher. Hello there. And my husband's birthday is on November 7th. The 7th. Okay, November 7th. Interesting. Thank you, Graciela. And Jose, what about you, my friend? Uh, okay, teacher. Thank you. Uh, my cousin is on March 2. Okay. March. Okay. Interesting. Uh, thank you. And here we have Gustavo. What about you, Gustavo? Hello, Your teacher. Yes. Hello, teacher. Hello my, mo my mom birthday is on January 18. 18. Yeah, it's very good. January, yeah, good. Imagine, thank you, Gustavo. Imagine sometimes we have like uh, mothers, our mom's birthday is in May and we have Mother's Day is in May. So it's kind of difficult sometimes because, yeah, because the presence of the celebrations. But anyway. Look at this. Very interesting. Did you know this? Uh, when you mention fish, you say, okay, one fish. But the same word fish, it's plural. You say fish, three fish, okay? Four fish. We don't say fishes for quantity, okay? But when we say fishes, okay, we're referring to more than one species. You can use fishes uh, as plural okay so uh, you can say one fish three fish but uh, if you say i like fishes you are talking about different types of fish okay a clown fish uh, you can say for example i don't know different like any other type of, of, of fish okay so um, these are um, irregular nouns, son los mm, sustantivos irregulares. We commonly know regular nouns. Los, los mm, sustantivos regulares son estos. Car, cars, book, books. But uh, if we have mouse, to say the plural, we say mice, okay? If we say child, the plural is children. It is not child. Man, men. Woman, women. And in this case, fish, fish. Okay? So, regular nouns, no solo tenemos verbos regulares, e irregulares, también tenemos sustantivos regulares e irregulares ojo con esto, so eh, very important, you already know this word ya conocen estas palabras, man, men child, children, but it is important to know the categories, ok just to know, solo para que ustedes sepan una retroalimentación, creo que ya lo habían visto antes, verdad but for you to know, ok I'm going to check the attendance list my friends, and I'm going to show you uh, some other vocabulary and let me see. Here I have some vocabulary for you. Okay. When we went to say that you think the same way, cuando quieren decir que ustedes están de acuerdo con algo, ustedes dicen, I agree. Okay. I agree. Yo sé que ustedes pueden pensar, ah, estoy de acuerdo, I am agree, porque am significa soy teacher. Um, well, not in this case, because agree, it's the complete phrase, okay? So, I agree, estoy de acuerdo. You can say, I agree absolutely. La uh, absolute, en la U está el, el, el acento, absolutely, y la E no se pronuncia. 
Number two, that's for sure. Number three, well said. Number four, that's so true. For example, um, death penalty should be legal. Hablando de, 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 de la sentencia, ¿verdad? Que en otros países se da, ¿verdad? Sentencia de, de muerte, si pudiese ser eh, legal. Hay, si las personas están de acuerdo, podrían decir, I agree absolutely, that's for sure, well said, that's so true. ¿Ok? If you say plastic bags should be banned, las bolsas de plástico deberían de estar eliminadas. I agree absolutely, that's for sure, well said, that's so true. So I'm going to check the attendance list and you please mention one of these uh, expressions. Please, just to have an idea. Adi, do we have Adi here? I guess no. Okay. Ana Cristina. I don't know if she's there. Elias. What about Elias? No. Okay. Rivas. No. Claudia. No, okay. Daniel, hello, Daniel. Hi, teacher. Okay, my friend. Say one of... Thank you. David, you go. Well said. Well said. Thank you. Uh, Alejandra. Good evening. Hello there. I agree absolutely. Perfect. Uh, Evelyn, I don't know if Evelyn is here. Okay. Uh, Graciela. That's no. for sure. Thank you, Graciela. Uh, Guillermo. Mm, present teacher. I agree absolutely. Perfect. Uh, Jose. Andres. That's for sure. Very nice. John. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, teacher. I choose um that's for sure. Thank you. Okay, cut this listener. Maritza. Uh, I don't know if Maritza is there. That's present. Thank you. That's for sure. Very nice. Okay. No Marvin, right? Noe. Hello, Noe. Present teacher. Thank you. That's for sure. Good one. Gustavo. Hi. Hi, teacher. Hello. That's for sure. Thank you. Oscar? Present. That's so true. Good one. Thank you. Rosalie? Present. Mm -hmm. That's so true. Thank you. Uh, Susie? Good evening. Well Rose. said. Thank you. And Teresa. I don't know if Teresa is here. Okay. Let's move, because we need to study this, it's so important. And we're going to move to the first part here we have, okay. Look at this, uh, read the words and repeat, write what do customers and companies representative do? Customer, it's like client. In companies representative, could it be a seller? Um, could it be a, a person attending to a client or to a customer? So here we have from one to 12, uh, some characteristics or, or functions. For example, number one, pick up the phone. Two, understand. Three, explain or complain. Five, help. Uh, six, request. Seven, get prices. Uh, eight, provide one's information. Uh, nine, assist. Ten, buy. Eleven, call. Twelve, receive. Okay? So take a look at this and you tell me. Please raise your hand if you want to participate. And we're going to put these phrases into two categories. Customer or company's representative. Okay, Guillermo, um, what do you think? What number? Uh, number 11. Okay. Call is in customer. Yeah, thank you. Definitely. Okay, good. 
Uh, what about if we continue with um, Susie and then Daniel, please? Uh, number 10, by customer. Okay. Good. Okay, Daniel and Noé. Number six, request information company. Okay, okay. Request is solicitar. Request information. Could it be, right? Yeah. Uh, company's representative, they request information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, could it be personal information? Yeah. Eh, Noé. Number eight provides one's information for a company's representative. Okay. Eh, Rosalie, please. Eh, number five. Mm -hmm. Help customer. Okay. Eh, en este caso es ayudar. ¿Será que customer ayuda o company's representative? Company's company. representative. Ajá. Yes. Yes, because it is like, uh, pro, uh, yeah, providing help. Thank you, uh, Rosalie. We go with John and then we go with Graciela. Number nine. Okay. Uh, company re representative. Yes. Is so important to us. This. Thank you. We go with Graciela and David. Okay, maybe Graciela is not ready. Uh, maybe we go with David and then Alejandro. Okay, number 12. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you say? Receive. Receive information. Huh? Okay, receive information, uh, customer. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's move now to Alejandra, and then we go with Maritza. Alejandra, are you there? Okay, uh, maybe not ready. Maritza, and then we go with Jose. Explain the company representative. Thank you. Okay, Jose, what about you? And then we go, Jose is already maybe. Uh, what about Guillermo and Daniel? Mm -hmm. Complain is in the customer. <laughs> yes, I guess this is very common, right? They complain a lot. Se quejan bastante. Okay, Daniel, what about you? Maybe one, two, or seven. And pick up the phone is the um, company? Yes. Yeah, that's it. And here we have number two, that is understand. Uh, the customer has to understand, okay? And number seven, similar, get prices of tiene precio, okay? So that's it, because uh, here we have, so here we have like some characteristics of a customer and company's representative. Now we know this, okay? Let's move. Now we're going to check about some words here. Okay. Choose the department where you work in. And a friend, explain to a partner what activities you do there. Okay. Here we have number one. What do customers uh, what do customers call for? Okay, vamos a hacer algo. Levanten. Levanten la mano. Okay, quienes con el emoji, quienes trabajan con clientes, con customers directamente. Okay, let's see. Guillermo, one. 
okay, who else? Because it depends on you. Okay, only Guillermo? I don't know. Yes, Noé, Gustavo. Okay, you work with customers directly. Yeah, Oscar, definitely. Okay, uh, I guess maybe some others uh, don't have a, a lot of contacts. Okay, Susie, yes, I know most of you, that's uh, what I know. Most of you have like contact with uh, these uh, with customers. So we're going to select one or two. Look at this. What do customers call for? ¿Para qué llaman los clientes en su trabajo? In your workplace. What are the reasons why customer call? Number one. Number two. What was the last call you had about? Maybe uh, uh, if you want to answer number one, you can say this. One. ¿Cuál es la razón? Ah. Uh, to buy some products. Or, pueden escribir dos. What was the last call you had about? Um, about, it was about. Bien. Si eligen la uno, eh, escriban número uno y luego la razón. In this case, to buy some products. Esa fue eh, la razón por la cual ellos llamaban. ¿Ok? En su área de trabajo. Number two. It was about a purchase. ¿De qué se trató la última llamada que tuvieron? Ah, fue acerca de una compra. ¿Ok? We're going to select one or two. And then answer. ¿Ok? In the chat. Ok. Uh, here are some examples. Uh, remember, try to uh, talk about your daily activities because you attend clients. Como atienden clientes, okay, what are the reasons they call or what was the last uh, call about? Okay, I'm going to wait for your answers on the chat.
Okay. Uh, let's uh, see what you have. We have some reasons. Okay, Noe, you start and then we go with Jose, please. Uh, what, what is the reason why customers call you? Okay, number one, to ask for a diagnosis. And number two, it was about a solution or a repairing. Okay, and the the end was good because there are some clients that they are very conflictive, but everything okay with the last call you have with, with your client, your customer, Noe? Yeah, everything was okay. Yeah, no problem. The car well, was fixing very well. <laughs> yeah, the, yes, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay, good one. What about Jose Andres? And then we go with um Guillermo. <laughs> Okay, teacher. Thank you. Uh, in my case, uh, the customer the, the last time was to buy internet services, right? And also to ask for some offers, basically. Okay, yeah. And because I want I want to know something. Yeah, something. Please. Uh maybe literally it's wrong, but how can I say Sahar Benta? Literally, or some way to, to express that in English. Mm -hmm. Okay. Close the sale or uh, I didn't know. I, I, I was working with sales a couple of years ago, and that was called closing or wrap up. When you wrap up is when you finish. It's like envelope, como un envoltorio, and you complete. So that's a wrap up. Closing, yeah, or yeah, you can say, say closing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess uh, those phrases uh, are uh, yeah, referred I, to I, that I, stage I, when you are finishing that process, right? Okay. Yes. Okay. Perfect, Jose. Thank you or asking, we go now with David and then Susie. Please, I David. Think, I think, uh, the number one, uh, what do customer call for? Uh, customer ask for product information. Ah, okay. Product information. Uh, number, two, number two, what was the, the, the last call? You had about a to rescue location. Ah, request location. Okay, yeah. Because yeah. maybe they don't know. They want to visit. Okay, thank you. Good one. Susie and then Daniel. Okay, Susie. Um, only number one, teacher. Please, go ahead. No Request information about new income to... Uh, 2024. 2024. Okay, so they are anticipating, right? They are, they want to know information about, okay? Uh, okay. New, new incomes. Thank you. Daniel, and here we have Gustavo. And the number one, uh, the solution problems. And the number two was to about repair to air, condi air conditions. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay. Daniel, you can also say solve problems. Es cuando vas a solucionar problemas. Cuando se va a encontrar algunas soluciones. Okay, you can say the like. Or to find a solution. También puedes decir eso. Okay. Por ejemplo acá. Find solutions. Okay. But thank you. Uh, AC, okay, good. Gustavo and Oscar. Uh, number two. Mm -hmm. uh, Please. To, to request a phone warranty check. Okay, thank you. And what about Oscar? Number one, to make a consult about, about one product. Okay, thank you. Okay, very nice. So here we have this. Very simple. It is part of the... Okay, I'm going to send... Le voy a enviar unas imágenes. 
sometimes my internet is kind of low, but I'm going to try to extend it. Mientras envíen, we're going to continue. Okay, let's move to this. What is your worst birthday uh, memory? It can be uh, one of your birthdays or maybe one of the birthdays of your family, friends, colleagues. I don't know. You have uh, so different options. Let's see if we have volunteers. If not, I'm going to select uh, a person. Okay, Guillermo, you have like a, an anecdote about that? Yes, teacher. Okay, you remember something. Okay, tell us. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. when I turned 23, uh, no one in my family wished a uh, happy birthday. That had never happened in my life, and it was very strange. Yeah. Uh, but everyone had things to do, and it was just one more day in my life for me. Okay, it was a normal day. Nothing special on that day. No, just work a lot. Just, <laughs> okay. Well, uh, fortunately, it happens. Yes, it happened to me once. And I, it, it feels really bad. I, I, I didn't feel good. No sentí nada bien. Okay, it's like, what? At least one, a couple of words, right? But what? Uh, thank you, Guillermo. So it is not a good memory, right? Not a good memory of your birthdays. Thank you. Uh, what about Noé? And after Noé, we're going to have Oscar. Okay. okay In my case, my worst birthday memory could be um, 10 years ago. My uncle Ramiro came with the cake in his hands and he accidentally dropped it. So at us at the party we were left without eating cake that day. That was oh. worse. Oh for everyone. Wow. Yeah. Really? Yes. Well I, I guess but uh, you have at at the end you have a party or, or a kind of celebration? Yeah we we need the party but without cake. <laughs> okay without cake. Yeah. Yes it's like it, it, it's like uh, the Everybody's waiting for cake, right? Everybody's waiting for that part. Yeah, that's especially for a birthday, but... Yes, come on. So it, maybe it is like in our culture, in our tradition, it's like if you don't have cake, you don't have party, right? Yeah, it's like yeah, it's true. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm so sorry. It is very strange to have like celebrations without that, okay, but... Thank you, Noe, okay? I'm so sorry. Uh, we go with Oscar, and then we go with David. Uh, in my case, the birthday of my sister, she is in September 9th. Uh, she had um, 10 years. And this day, an um, uncle is died. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, your uncle passed away. So that's right, pass away. I'm, I'm sorry. Yes, you can say uh my my aunt, my cousin died. Yeah, you can say en pasado. Pero normal normalmente cuando decimos pass away es como cuando nosotros decimos pasó a mejor vida. Ajá, es diferente decir en español, ah, murió, que pasó a mejor vida. Es un eufemismo. But of course, it is like not a good uh, new. Okay, no, no, es una buena noticia, verdad? Okay, it's like wow, very impacting. So yeah, the celebration is not going like too well. Okay, thank you, Oscar. Yes, I can imagine. Uh, David, and after David, we go with Susie. Okay, teacher. Uh, my worst birthday memory was last was last year. Or my family forgot my special day. Oh, really? They rem <laughs> yes. <laughs> they remember it until it was already night. They all started calling, calling me. 
to okay. congratulation me. What to, to say? Party, congratulations. <laughs> party without cake. Okay. Uh, similar to Guillermo, but in your case, <laughs> at least people realized. La gente se dio cuenta. Okay. Cuando ustedes dicen notice or realize significa darse cuenta. Okay. Realize that so, so the people realized, noticed that it was your birthday. So, hey, come on, David is having birthday. Hello, David. Congratulations. But Guillermo didn't have those calls. No tuvo ni el pobre Guillermo. So, well, it's something that happens. But at the end, you maybe you were waiting for those calls in the morning. Quizás tuviste esperando la llamada, David. What's going on? So, thank you, David. Uh, nice. Okay, we go with Susie and Rosalie. Susie, you have yours. Yes. Uh, teacher, sincerely, I don't remember having a bad uh, memory of my birthday. Oh, okay. All your birthdays are have been good. No problems with the birthdays. Yes, really. And what about your family, friends? No, everything was like fine. Yes, teacher. Okay, congratulations, because uh, you have had uh, just good memories of the birthdays. Thank you. Uh, Rosalie, what about you? Um, no, I don't. I don't. You don't remember uh, that anything? I remember uh -huh, anything. Uh, I only have good birthday memories. Okay, just good birthday memories. Okay, thank you. Well, my friends, uh, we're going to continue later. Aquí tenemos, here we have this chart. Veamos acá. Past to be is easy. El pasado del verbo to be es fácil. Porque la vez pasada, because the last time I was telling you that am um, is se traduce en was. And are Cambia a where. Ok. No problem. Si ustedes quieren decir. If you want to say. Um, is not. Simplemente decimos was not. Right. If you want to say aren't. You say weren't. And simple. Ok. So I guess you don't have problems with this. Because I already know. Uh, This, we I explained this like two or three days ago. Hace como dos o tres días les expliqué eso, right? So, no problems. But these uh, are just past to be. Now, we're going to check the simple past. Vamos a ver el pasado simple de los verbos. So, in the verbs, we have two types. Regular and irregular. Okay, regular and irregular. So, two, only two categories, and we're going to study them. Ya les envié dos imágenes. So, just let me check. I don't know what's going on with this. Okay. Um, one of the pictures or photographs that I send you Is the one that is a chart with green color, la que tiene como el color verdecito. So, a very simple form to understand this is that here we have um, the regular verbs are this. Verbos regulares. Ok. Vamos a centrarnos en eso. Tenemos el presente. El presente es fácil. We already know it. Ya conocemos el presente. El, tenemos el pasado y el pasado participio. Past participle. Eso no lo vamos a estudiar ahorita. Así que relax. Tenemos present and, y tenemos past. Easy peasy. Regular verbs are, uh, have, uh, have a characteristic. Solo le agregamos ed. ¿Okay? Sencillo. Todos tienen ed. Todos tienen ed. 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 ¿Verdad? Todo bla, bla, bla. Esa es la característica. So, we have clear of this. Tenemos claro esto. Now, 
On the contrary, here we have irregular verbs. Ahora en el contrario tenemos los verbos irregulares. Y con los verbos irregulares se trabaja diferente. ¿Por qué? Porque se trata del cambio de algún tipo, bueno, el cambio de escritura. Como les digo, eh, past participle, eh, lo vamos a ver después. Relax. Pero que okay, lo podemos ver. Ahora, los verbos tenemos en presente y el pasado cambia a veces un poco, a veces casi en su totalidad. Tenemos, eh, por ejemplo, do y tenemos did. Ok, tenemos, ese es, es fácil, drink, drunk. Lo único que cambia es one letter, letter A, ¿verdad? Eh, tenemos este que es it y tenemos eight. Lo único que cambia es el orden de las letras, pero son las mismas letras, it, eight. Y así sucesivamente. Hay algunos que ustedes ya conocen, ¿verdad? Ahora, hay otros verbos que pertenecen a esta categoría que no cambian. Por ejemplo, hit. Hit. Hit en presente es golpear y en pasado también es hit. Put es poner. Y en pasado put también es poner. But always they belong to the irregular verbs category. Siempre este, están con la categoría de los verbos irregulares. Ok. Teacher, how can I do for remember this? ¿Qué puedo hacer para recordar eso? Please, you have to memorize them. Hay que memorizarlos. But we're going to start with the uh, most logical verbs. Hay que empezar con los más lógicos. Teacher, but I don't find any logics in this. No encuentro lógica en esto. Mm, well, here we have some logics. Sí, tenemos algún tipo de lógica. Eh, vamos, podemos en, enfocarnos en los que solo cambian una letra. Puede uh -huh. ser eso. Y si hacemos eso, pues creo que vamos a encontrar algunos que son bastante prácticos. Podemos comenzar con eso. Como yo siempre digo, as always I say, look for your logistics. Váyanse por su sentido común, por su lógica. Si Noé, if Noé knows a lot of birds, it doesn't mean that David has to know the same birds that Noé. Okay, so every, every, every mind works different. Así que busquen algunos que les parezcan como pues, eh, que sean prácticos. Veamos algunos que cambian poco. Veamos uno los que cambian un poco, okay? Noé, eh, please eh, mention one in present and one in the past that you consider that are like logical. Vamos a algunos que son lógicos. Regular or irregular? Eh, irregular. We go with irregular now. Okay, for me, dwell, dwelt. Okay, yes, very nice. Thank you. Okay, Daniel and then David. Paul fell. Yeah, that's it. Very simple. David and Gustavo. Paul fell. Thank you very much. Uh, we go with Gustavo and Oscar. Dream, drove. Okay, yes, kind of uh, simple, right? Uh, we go now with maybe Guillermo and Rosalie. Ah, okay, Oscar and then Guillermo. Okay, drink, drunk. Yes, very logistic, uh, very logical. Uh, Guillermo and Rosalie. Okay, eat. Eight. It, eight. it doesn't change a lot. Okay, Rosalie, please. Keep, get. Okay, thank you. Bien, hasta ahí. So, uh, what is the difference between regular and irregular? That when we change to the past, uh, they have like a different writing. Tienen una escritura diferente. Esos son los irregulares. Los regulares, they are teachers, son fáciles. They're a piece of cake. Um, sí, pero ya vamos a estudiar un poco los irregulares. Eh, los, perdón, los regulares. Los irregulares normalmente cambian una letra, dos letras. Hay algunos que cambian en su totalidad. Le puedo poner un ejemplo. Yo considero que en su totalidad. El verbo ir, go. En pasado se dice went. Es one of the craziest verbs. Uno de los verbos más locos. ¿Cómo? How is it possible that go is went, but in the past is like, what? 
but um, it is important to memorize them. Hay que memorizarlos poco a poco, little by little. Okay, so uh, questions about irregulars. Preguntas sobre los irregulares, porque ahorita nos vamos a enfocar en los regulares. Aunque parezcan fáciles, they look very simple, but uh, we have to study them. Debemos de estudiarlos. Y nos vamos a tardar quizá un par de minutitos en esto. No questions with the regulars. Okay. So remember, very important. Memorizar. Verbos que sean lógicos para ustedes. O verbos que ustedes vean. There are a lot of verbs in the lyric, en las letras de las canciones. A lot of verbs. So you can find uh, maybe uh, your favorite artist or band. Look for some songs. And you're going to find a lot of verbs. Right? Encontré un montón de verbos en pasado. Okay? Especially romantics. Eh, la, la romántica porque como hablan del amor es pasado y todo. Y corta vena. So, da, da, muchos verbos en pasado. A lot of verbs. Ok. Eh, José, tell me. Yes, teacher. In this obligation. So we need. We must to memorize. Ok. There is another way to, to learn that. <laughs> Because um, I am trying, I have been trying to do that. Okay. And I can. Yeah, that's, uh, it is not an obligation in deal because you can uh, speak and explain, but with a limited, well, a limited vocabulary. It is not going to be the same if you are in an intermediate level, but your vocabulary is uh, limited. Cuando tu vocabulary está limitado, Es como que estás utilizando las mismas palabras siempre. But if you are in another level and you use, es como lo mismo que yo les decía, different, different forms to say, fine, excellent, terrific, awesome, great. Entonces, se va expandiendo tu vocabulario. So, that's it. Another, maybe three forms. One, by memory, que cuesta bastante. It's, I know it is difficult, but you can uh, memorize. And um, also, you can have the second option that is uh, with some lyrics, algunas can letras de canciones, letras, eh, nombres de canciones, las letras, películas, I don't know. And the third form is association. Algunas asociaciones que pueden hacer con palabras. Uh, por ejemplo, esta. Miren el verbo beber. Drink, drunk, drunk. Okay, drink, drunk, drunk. Okay. And here we have some other. No sé si está acá. Otros que son, hay que encontrar un patrón. Miren. Lay, led, led. Pay, pay, pay. Esa es otra manera. Encontrar como un patrón y asociarlo, ok, eh, tenemos que otra es, el verbo cantar, verdad, sin, san, son, entonces así podemos ir viendo de qué manera nosotros podemos, pues, eh, irlos memorizando, verdad, Eso, pero eso va a depender de, de acuerdo a cómo lo uses. Por eso les digo las canciones o si, o si quieren eh, algún tema en específico, ciertos verbos. Pero sí, eh, José, lo ideal es que sí se aprendan, no todos, pero cierto número para que tengan vocabulario para poder eh, explicar ciertas cosas. Thank you for your question. Buena pregunta. Eh, John, yes, you have a comment or question. Eh... A contribution, please. Um, I think that the important thing is to learn the most um, common on every day. You can, you can, you can think. Yes, definitely. Let me see. Okay. Another thing you can do it. Say, for example, 10 verbs and all day long, stay repeated. Mm -hmm. You can repeat and you can fight for the ones that are maybe, yes, interesting for you, as, as Noe said, 
uh, select 10 verbs and you're going to, yeah, you're, you're going to, to find, well, maybe the facility to pronounce and to learn it. Yeah, I know. Uh, no le estoy pidiendo tanto. I remember when I was in uh, high school, my teacher used to uh, used to give like five pages um, with a lot of verbs, maybe like 800 verbs, como 800 verbos. And she wanted to to us to memorize all of them. And it was really difficult. But I could memorize a lot. Could memorize muchos, but not all of them. But you can start little by little, poco a poco, as, as Noé or some others or John is saying. So that's it. Vamos con el, con el siguiente. Ok, eh, the second, la siguiente página que esa se las envié, eh, I send this for you to have a very clear idea, como para que tengan una idea bastante clara con el tema de, de, de verbos regulares o irregulares. Ahora, eh, los verbos irregulares, aunque ustedes consideren que sean difíciles, creo que ahí están y tienen ciertos patrones que ya los vamos a ir pues estudiando poco a poco. Recuerden que esta es la clase principal. Eh, mañana voy a dar una retroalimentación. We're going to talk about again about these verbs. Vamos a hablar sobre eso porque eso sí se tarda un poquito. Bien. Tenemos, ojo con esto. Esto sí quiero que, quiero, quiero que, me, que me pongan más atención todavía porque esto yo lo aprendí hasta tiempo después. No me lo supieron explicar. And I consider that this is so important for your English. I, en los verbos regulares, en pasado, we have three types of pronunciation. Tres tipos de pronunciación. Una que termina en ID, una que termina en T, y una que termina en la letra D. I'm going to, um, I'm going to show you. Les voy a mostrar. Number, case number one. Una, como les digo, termina en ID, una que termina en T y una que termina en D. Vamos a ver la primera. Wait es esperar. Waited es esperaba. Ojo, waited, waited. Todos estos terminan en ID. Todos esos, ¿ok? Number two, siguiente caso, los que se pronuncian con T, yo no estoy diciendo que se termina en T, no, estoy diciendo que la pronunciación es con T. Vamos a ver, vamos a ver este ejemplo. Besar con besaba. Escuchen, kiss, kiss. Considero que ese es eh, del más difícil, porque confunde. Escuchen, kiss, kiss. Escuchen la diferencia, kiss. Is, entonces es el, es el punto clave de este, ¿verdad? Igual, miss, past, cross, y así sucesivamente. Vamos con la siguiente. En la pronunciación que termina con D, ¿ok? Tenemos, eh, por ejemplo, plan, plan. ¿Escuchan la diferencia? Mm. Es como nasal, como mm, y se mantiene. En cambio, el D, la D corta un poquito. Oigan, plan, plan, plan. Vamos con otro ejemplo. Aquí sí se entiende más. Answer, answered. Answer, answered. Hay una leve diferencia. Ahora, la clave es la siguiente. Si aquí... Uh, si el verbo termina en T o en D, la pronunciación va a ser con ID. Si el verbo termina con la K, S, la X, la P, la H, la pronunciación va a ser con T. Y si el verbo, estoy explicando esto en, en español para que se, se entienda a su totalidad. Y si el verbo termina en L, la en letra Y, N, en E, en R o en la W, normalmente va a termin va, se va a pronunciar con la letra D. ¿Ok? Entonces, eso es para que entiendan esta página, ¿verdad? Para que la practiquemos y el día de mañana ya lo vamos a hacer de la mejor manera. ¿Ok? Entonces, recapitulando, la primera categoría que está aquí se termina en ID. Por ejemplo, need 
tenemos needed, ¿ok? Hated. Vamos a hacer una de esas, ¿ok? Eh, cada uno elija uno de estos verbos de la primera categoría, termina en ID, ID, ¿ok? Vamos a ver. Eh, John, comenzamos contigo, and then we go with Noé. Ad, Adid. Mm -hmm. Adid, thank you. Ok, Noé. Ad, Adid. Perfect. Uh, we go with José and Guillermo. Ok, José, are you there? Yes, uh, it's slow right now, my, my internet. Ok, no problem. José and then Guillermo. Miss, Miss. Ah, ok. Estamos con la T. Ah, ok. Miss, missed. Thank you. Ah, ah. Estamos al inicio, pero si le hiciste, no, no problem. Ok, it's ok. Thank you. Ok, Guillermo and David. Uh, want, want. Thank you. Uh, David and Oscar. Pretend, pretended. Thank you. Oscar and Rosalie. Invite, invited. Thank you. Rosalie and Susie. Repeat, repeated. Thank you, Gustavo, eh, Susi and Gustavo. Okay, eh, maybe Susi is not there. Gustavo and Maritza. Okay, teacher, plan, plan tip. Okay, aunque tú estás con plan. Vaya, en esa de plan se terminaré con D, plan. Ok, ajá. Eh, Maritza en Graciela. Thank you. Ok, Graciela, are you there? Which one, teacher? Eh, estamos con la primera categoría. First category, que termina con ID. ID. Uh -huh. Anyone? Yes. Repeat. Repeat it. Ok, thank you. Bien, entonces ya estamos. The first category, easy. Ya vieron, está fácil. The first category is very easy. The, no, the second category is maybe kind of complicated because of the sound, por el sonido. No es que no se pueda, pero sí se puede. Bien, entonces todos estos eh, terminan, todos terminan con la letra T, ok? Todos estos, I'm sorry, I don't know what I'm doing. This is, thing is kind of crazy. Bien. Créanme que después de, 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 de ver esto, ya, 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 ya no van a percibir los verbos igual. Bien. Y vamos. Por ejemplo, as, ¿verdad? Mis. Les sugiero que utilicen cualquiera de estos. Si quieren cualquiera de los que terminan con K, sí se puede, pero es más difícil. Por ejemplo, park. Walk, pero también se puede decir miss, kiss, ve, cash, wash, ¿verdad? Cualquiera, ¿ok? De los que terminan en T. We're going to start with Guillermo en Noé, please. Ok, watch, watched. Thank you. Noé en Graciela. Ok, hey, watch, watch. Yeah, perfect. Graciela en Rosalí. Ok, maybe you're still not ready. Hello. Yes. Hello. Thank you. Rosalie and Oscar. Dance, dance. Good one. Oscar and David. Cross, trust. Yes, that's correct. Uh, David and Daniel. Chase, chase. Good. Uh, Daniel and Jose. Miss, miss it. Ok, miss. Good. Uh, Jose and Susie. Ok, uh, type, type it. Good. Uh, ok, Susi, and after Susi, we go with John. Think, thingness, uh, okay. thingness. Uh, ok, estás en la, en, la, en la segunda categoría. Ok. Uh, uh, no, teacher, creo que fue en la tercera que la escogí. Sí, es que estamos en la segunda. Uh -huh. Ok. Bake, bake. Ok, bake. Ok, thank you. John and Maritza. Finish, 
finished. Good one. Maritza and Alejandra. Watch, watch. Thank you. I don't know if Alejandra is there. Okay. Uh, if you notice, it's not that complicated. Los felicito están pronunciando super bien. You are pronouncing really good. Pensé que no la iban a, a tomar con tanta facilidad, pero entonces le voy a poner cosas más difíciles. No problem. No se preocupen. Okay. Uh, category number three, it's easy. Es esta fácil, la, la categoría tres. Because it's, uh, we're going to use uh, D. Vamos a utilizar la letra D. Y si se dan cuenta, estas son la mayoría. Miren cuántos verbos son acá. Bueno, casi igual. Pero acá, lo único que van a hacer es pronunciar la D. Escuchan. Cold, cold. Plan, plan. Clean, clean. Es como exagerar un poquito la letra D. Ok. We're going to uh, work with this. Y ya van a ver que los otros ejercicios que vamos a ver van a estar bien fáciles. Ok. And we're going to start with David and then Oscar. Ok, David. Study. Study. Ah, study. Thank you. Oscar and Guillermo. Enjoy. Enjoy the Good. Guillermo and Rosalí. Prepare. Prepare. Good. Rosalí and Graciela. Kill. Kill. Good. Graciela and José. Arrive. Arrive. Good. José and Noé. Um, fail. Fail. Yes. Noé and Daniel. I'm sorry, no, I, I, we can't hear you. The microphone, I guess. Okay, no, I, maybe we'll have difficulties with this. Okay, no problem. And we're going to wait a little bit. Uh, let's continue with Daniel and Susie. Surprise, surprise. Good, okay. Susie and after Susie, uh, we go with John. Enjoy, enjoy it. Yes, John and Maritza. Uh, activate the microphone, John. I'm sorry, teacher. Live. No problem. Live. Yes, good one. Maritza and Gustavo. Inside, inside. Okay, and Gustavo, please. Clean, clean, clean. Up. Okay, cleaned. Yes. Okay. So, um, questions about this? Yes, Noe. Go ahead, my friend. A fried, fried. Yeah, that's it. You're doing really good. Todo lo están haciendo muy bien. Thank you. Okay. Three categories with the uh, regular verbs. Sometimes we think, ah, they're very easy. Just add ed and we are done. No problem. Mm, yes. Mm -hmm. In writing, is, they are easy, but related to the pronunciation, we need to practice a little bit. It's just practice, okay? Well, and if we don't have a... John, do you have some questions? Or any no, questions? It's clear. It's okay. clear. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I know it is kind of what? It is kind of... The, the problem I can see is learn the verb. I think. <laughs> yeah, learning the verbs. But if you notice, there are... Pero con las reglas, pues, it's clear. Yeah, I guess it, it, it's kind of clear. Let me show you. Es que le voy a enseñar una imagen que tengo por acá. Y se van a dar cuenta que... Where is it? I know he, I have it here. Just for you to know that we have like very, you know a lot of verbs. Eso es lo que quiero que, que aclararles. Ustedes conocen bastantes verbos. But sometimes we think that we don't know uh, verbs enough. No tenemos la cantidad de verbos suficientes. But yes, you do. Sí los tienen, ¿ok? 
but uh, something is that. Well, anyway, we have to continue learning. Tenemos que seguir aprendiendo más. I don't know what is this. Se me perdió esto. But anyway, I'm going to show you later. Después la voy a buscar mientras vamos a la siguiente actividad. Okay. Okay. Let me see here. Look. Vaya, ahora vemos lo del manual. Look at the manual. Ahora que tenemos esto, ya lo vemos un poco diferente. Yeah, it's kind of different and easy. Está fácil. Past of B, okay? I need you to pronounce this. Oscar, I need you to uh, pronounce, uh, please, number one and number two. From past of B, please. It was... Okay. It was a great experience and the agent was very helpful. Thank you. Okay, uh, Daniel, please, number three and number four from Pastor B. We were on our page. We were uh, excited, excited. About, excited about service. Thank you, the service, thank you. Okay, Maritza, a simple pass, I gave. I gave my account information. Mm -hmm. Esta he se pronuncia con D al final. Okay. He called yesterday at night. He called, yes. Yesterday at night. Thank you. Oh. Okay. Uh, John, please, number three, number four. La palabra work se va a pronunciar con T al final. ¿Verdad? Work. The, the program worked well. Yes. They bought... They bought the product last week. Mm -hmm. That's it, last week. Okay. So, uh, give is the, I'm sorry, gave is the pass of give. Este es el paso de give. Eh, pasado, que significa dar. Bought es el pasado de buy, que significa comprar. And so on. Okay. Let's continue with this. And here we have, okay. Write the sentences with the words provided using the pass of B or simple pass. Okay? The pass of B or simple pass. Um, I'm going to give you time, le voy a dar tiempo, and then we're going to complete this. Cuando vean la palabra este B, no vamos a poner B. Ya sabemos, ¿verdad? Que B in present, we are, am, um, is, are. Pero en el pasado solo tenemos dos. Was and were. Okay? Uh, you can look for the dictionary if you want. Uh, you can uh, look for Google Translator if you want, okay? So I'm going to give you some time. Le voy a dar un poco de tiempo, okay? And then we're going to complete this. Y vamos a terminar eso. Please take, take your time. And then we're going to listen to some. En unos momentos, comenzamos.
Okay, let's listen to some of you. What do you think about this? Um, we're going to continue with this and you tell me if uh, we're not going to have problems with this sentences. I consider that they are kind of easy. Creo que está bastante fácil. Okay, so um, any volunteer? Here we have six uh, sentences. Some of them are with verb B, some other are with regular verbs, some others with irregular verbs. Okay, Maybe... and right. Please, what and number? Uh, number, uh, let me see, number one. Number one, then Daniel. Okay, number one. I was interested product. Yeah. I was interested, yeah, in the product. We we can add a uh, more words, no problem. To have uh, more sense, uh, Daniel, please. Then number three, she read the policies. Okay, the policies. Okay, thank you, Daniel. Uh, le voy a explicar algo de de este verbo es bien tramposo. Okay. Uh, ese el verbo leer pertenece a los irregulares. Ok, en presente tenemos read y casualmente tiene lógica, read it, pero le voy a explicar algo. Este verbo en pasado se escribe a igual, pero se pronuncia como el color rojo, red. Si quieren anótenlo, este verbo es bien tricky. So, read in the present, but in the past is red. Y si sí tiene, tiene sentido como que si le agregamos ED, se ve bien. But no, believe me, read in present, red in the past. Así que, thank you, Daniel, for saying it. Ya tenemos este, este verbo todo extraño. Son de los verbos tramposos. Eh, Rosalie, please. And number five. Let's do it. They stand. Mm -hmm. The contract contra by my email. Yes, by email. Okay, sent, uh, it's an uh, irregular verb. The N, uh, letter D, changes for letter T. Then, thank you. Okay, uh, anybody else? Okay, if not, we're going to select a person. For example, we're going Numbers. to have... Please, uh, no, I right. I think number six could be he was disappointed. Yes. Okay. Uh, disappointed, pero normalmente se dice disappointed. Disappointed, um, incluso con R, disappointed. Yeah, it is very common to pronounce like this. Uh, the British they say disappointed because they have like a very formal uh, English but in American English disappointed it's okay it's that, difficult to talk with them English. yes it's yeah. yes it's, it's different because they don't pronounce the letter R for example they don't say the car yeah. they say the car they, they sound like this okay and it's difficult to talk with some people from India too. Yeah, they have a very like they are singing como cantadito. Okay, very strange, very strange English. Okay, my friends, let's go with number two, four. If not, maybe I know Guillermo wants to participate with number two, number four. Okay, um, the number four. four. Uh, the supervisor gave me a uh, discount. Yes. Um, estoy viendo acá que este verbo ya está en pasado. En presente de give, but this is already. But it is okay. Thank you, Guillermo. And, and what about... Uh, here help by ya acabamos de ver este verbo ok 
ese verbo bien extraño. You bought the item, 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 uh, in December. Okay. So here we have the sentences. Okay. We have like a very clear idea uh, how to use simple past. And now we're going to have this. Well, we're going to continue in a moment. Let's continue talking about what is your work birthday memory? What is your uh, worst birthday memory? Maybe we can have Daniel and then Alejandra and then Graciela. Okay, Daniel, do you have like a, a worst birthday memory? Okay, and um, I have bad memory, but I think my worst birthday is when I was sick, very sick, and then I was in the bed all day. I was 16 years old, more or less. Okay, okay. So you didn't have fun, no te divertiste. You, you didn't celebrate with it as you wanted, como tú querías. Okay. Well, so sorry. And especially because you were very young. So when we are young, we want to celebrate a lot, but okay. Thank you. Uh, because you were like uh, ill. I don't know if, if Alejandra is ready, if not Graciela. Okay, if Graciela is not ready, uh, let's go with John and then Jose. Okay, John. Okay, let me remember. Uh, okay, uh, when when my son was little, we went to an aunt birthdays. Okay, and um, because we we were careless with my wife, and she accidentally uh, stepped into the nest on red ants. Oh wow, wow, wow! Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, and and he was like bitten, fue mordido with with, with because yeah. for, for the ants, uh, kind of dangerous. Yeah, because every red day, ants are every, very. Every day I cry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, uh, those kind of accidents maybe, yeah, may. Uh, make us to, to to feel like I don't know like poor of poor of them or the celebration is not the same. You are worried, ya estás preocupado, so you are thinking about what to do, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, John. Well, kind of this difficult. Similar with bees, con las abejas. That's another thing that's very complicated, and especially because there are a lot of people that they are allergic. So imagine. Thank you, John. Uh, Jose, what about you? And then we go with Maritza. Okay, teacher. Basically, in my case, uh, like the worst birthday, right? Was some years ago with my mom, right? My birthday, basically. And we were on pops, I remember, as far as I remember, or Burger King, I don't remember very well. But she was like feeling bad because uh, she was just she wasn't be able to give me something better in at that moment. So okay. maybe this that that was like the worst, right? You know yes. what I mean? Like when you like things, you know. And, and sometimes we are expecting, okay, we are expecting for some other things, right? But the moment, the situations are kind of, we have limitations. So, yeah, we have to accept what we receive, right? But, okay. Nice, Jose. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. I get the idea. Maritza, I don't know if Maritza, you are there. Yes. Please. Uh, my brother's, my brother's beard died. Mm -hmm. uh, two years ago. They called us to say that our uncle died. Oh, come on. Okay. 
an uncle died. So yes, I know it is like a very complicated and definitely it changes uh, all, all, all the all, all the celebration. Lo cambia todo, right? Yes. It's not the same. It's not the same. And then people want to go and okay, that's a really bad bad situation. Thank you, Marisa, for for sharing. Okay. okay, my friends. The last, maybe three days ago, hace tres días, vimos esto. Uh, simple past versus past continuous. Okay, we know the simple past. Ya lo estudiamos nuevamente. We have a clear idea about what is the simple past. Okay, for example, I went to the cinema yesterday. Fui al cine ayer. I went to the cinema. Okay. I always visited my grandparents. Siempre visité mis abuelas. Okay. Cuando estaba pequeño, when I was a little, I lived near Liverpool, vivía cerca de Liverpool. And past continuous is the verb be in the past and verb with ing. El verbo de to be en pasado más que los verbos con ing. Ok, ahora, ¿cuál es la función de estos? ¿Y cómo esto pueden pues, coincidir? Like this. Um, use Past continuous or past progressive with simple past to describe an action that was interrupted by another action. Okay. They were enjoying the morning when the thief stole the briefcase. ¿Verdad? Ellos estaban disfrutando la mañana cuando el ladrón robó el portafolio. Entonces, ¿qué estaba pasando? Ah, ellos estaban, they were enjoying, disfrutando. ¿Y qué pasó? De repente interrumpió el ladrón y robó. ¿Ok? Eh, ejemplo, I am drinking coffee. I was drinking coffee when my phone rang. Estaba bebiendo café. I was drinking coffee cuando mi teléfono sonó. My eh, cell phone rang. ¿Ok? So, and the, this uh, this exercise, you already uh, have them, yo creo que ya lo tienen, ¿verdad? Lo vamos a completar ahora, I know we have like uh, 22 sentences, tenemos 12 oraciones, o sea, son 11, pero en cada una hay dos, y eh, debemos de ver qué acción interrumpe a otra, ¿ok? Hay que ver el sentido de eso, solo nos quedan 20 minutos de clase, ¿ok? Eh, Ok, eh, me pregunta el, ¿cómo se llama? José, si el past, simple past y el progressive son lo mismo. No, el, el pasado simple es este. I call my friend. It's the simple past. El progressive o el continuous, que es, es el mismo, progressive o continuous, es I was uh, dancing in the party okay when my friend called me entonces qué estoy diciendo acá yo estaba bailando en la fiesta cuando mi cuando mi amigo me llamó okay so eh, la acción que interrumpe acá es my friend called me ¿Qué, qué interrumpió el baile que me estaba echando aquí en la fiesta okay so take a look at this And please, I need you to complete, uh, maybe, maybe we can send, tal vez podemos enviar nuevamente esta, tal vez no, me, me, me apoya, no sé si ya la enviaron. Ok, thank you. Uh, ya enviaron la, uh -huh. you send the explanation. Ah, sí, aquí está. Maritza la había mandado la vez pasada también. Ok. Uh, let's work in pairs. Vamos a trabajar en equipo. Please. Um, mientras empiecen a hacer las, ¿cómo se llama? Las oraciones. Esta va a ser la última actividad que vamos a hacer porque esto toma un poquito de tiempo. Luego las completamos en we finished. Ok, my friends. I'm going to assign you Just give me a second. Uh, 
am trying to estoy intentando de que, de que puedan trabajar en equipos sé que algunos están como como listeners ok my friends sí, en un momento Ok, eso sí, ya envié la solicitud para que puedas unirte también. Alejandra Graciela también envía la solicitud para que puedan unirse con los equipos. Ok, teacher, solo que ingresé y me decía que solo estaba yo. Mm, eh, te envía a otro, a otro equipo, por okay. eso. Ok, ok. No, no, no te digo la otra solicitud. ¿O te no, sale ahorita no. Ahorita no. Permítame, es que cuando sea así no se salgan, porque yo siempre estoy viendo acá y de ahí los envío. Okay. Pero déjame, okay. déjame, déjame, ahorita, ahorita, te envío. ahorita me acaba de caer. Ok, adelante. Okay. Gracias. You're welcome. 